everything we thought we knew. It was all just a fabrication that the Red Women, no, that the Helganquil made up. Right. Assuming we can believe anything that Hevrek 35 has told us, that is. Well, if the names are anything to go by, it's possible the Helganquil could be behind the fruits of Helgen too. But if Hevrek 35 was telling the truth, and this was all just one massive lie, does that mean everything we've done up until now has been pointless? No, I don't think so. Or at least I hope not. I think it just means we've lost our foothold for now. That's all. Really? Well then, if we've lost it, I guess we'll just have to find another. All of us together. And if we can't find one, then we'll make a new one. End of story. Make one, huh? I see. Right then. Count me in. You both seem awfully calm. <laughs> Only because after everything we've seen, we don't have the energy to keep being shocked. How are you holding up, Ringwell? That whole talk about the Renans looked like it shook you up a bit. Yeah. I get this sinking feeling whenever I remember how Dan and mages like my family were persecuted and died out. And now, I finally know why that is. <sighs> but I was thinking, if Renans end up living together with Danans again, then mages won't be such an unusual thing to see on Dana anymore, right? <laughs> I know it's not as simple as all that, but... Danans probably won't be so quick to let their guards down, and there might be Renans who still act superior because of their arts. It wouldn't surprise me. Three hundred years of bad blood and prejudice isn't going to be an easy thing to overcome. Yeah. I know firsthand just how much hatred can take hold in your heart once you let it in. But even so, I was still able to change. And if I can change, so can anyone else. So I was thinking maybe, I don't know, I could use my position as both a Danon and a mage to help bring both sides together. Renwell. That great spirit worries me too, though. Dana's will feels so warm and inviting. So why is Rena's will trying to destroy our entire planet? Now that you mention it, Hevrek 35 and the other scientists here never really brought that up. Maybe they don't know either. Maybe. But regardless, at the end of the day, Dan is still our home. There's no way we can let it be destroyed. We won't. We'll keep it safe no matter what. I still can't believe it, man. You're not the only one still trying to make sense of all this. Believe me. Really? You've never struck me as the type of guy to get hung up on these sorts of things. Did you forget what happened back in Thistleham? Once my memory started coming back to me, I felt completely and totally lost. It was really that bad for you? Yeah, it was. But thanks to Law and everybody else, I remembered that I still had things out there worth fighting for. Man, I think you might be a better guy than me, Alfin. All I can remember thinking was, when's this guy gonna get his act together? Law. I was too worried about repeating the same mistakes I'd made back with my dad, and running away from the truth. That was no way to live, and I've tried to stay strong, my way. But all this talk about other races and the world ending? If I can be honest with you guys, it's just all too much for me to handle right now. I know this is going to sound strange coming from me, but maybe the key is not to worry too much about the big stuff right now. Oh? I used to worry all the time about my thorns, for obvious reasons. But I never really opened up to anyone about them. And when I realized my visions pointed to a threat that was bigger than me, 
I didn't know what I should do, or who to tell. But that's when I finally got it. You guys were all there for me, to teach me what's really important. I just had to open up and listen. In other words, if you let the big picture stuff get you all muddled up inside, you'll begin to lose sight of what you really care about. Yeah, I think you're right. The thing that's most important, what I really care about, all I want to do is protect the people that really matter to me, to fight for them. That's good enough, right? Not everyone is strong enough to fight. Huh? It's something your dad told me once when he was still alive. Law, you know you're strong enough to fight, and you're strong enough to protect the people you care about. Forget all the big stuff going on. Just don't lose sight of what you want to protect in the first place. Sound good? Yeah. Yeah, I think it does. <laughs> it's like a big weight's been lifted off my shoulders. I'll fight to protect the people around me. Just like I always have. I think that's best. I apologize for making you witness that. You mean hearing the origins of the Renans? Indeed. It's shocking to have so many things I thought to be indelible fade away in mere seconds. Even I'm still not sure everything we've heard here is actually true. Let's not delude ourselves. If what we've heard is a lie, it's a rather elaborate one. Hmm. <laughs> I can only imagine that you must have been constantly feeling like this, ever since your memory returned, Alfin. And you as well, Shion. About your thorns, and being a maiden. That's just part of being alive, don't you think? Well, uh, to say the least. But enough about me. I'm not concerned for myself. What concerns me is all of the other Renans out there. When you say the other Renans, you mean the ones that are living on Lenigus or Dana, right? Correct. Even if we stop the Great Spirit from annihilating Dana, our problems will still remain. Putting aside the untold state that Rena may be in, if we do not truly belong there, we will have to think long and hard about where it is that we wish to return to. So, I guess your only real choices at this point are to either stay on Lenigus, or come down to Dana, huh? And right now, Lenigus might not even be a safe option. And at the same time, Danans are hardly likely to embrace Renans with open arms. If the issue is forced, things could turn dire. There is, after all, three centuries worth of hatred to overcome between us. And the victims of our rule have absolutely every right to feel animosity towards us Renans. Our own circumstances as the aggressors are irrelevant. I didn't expect the former Lord of Menencia to be so down about people reconciling. Menencia's fate was a stroke of good luck. There had been backlash over how it had been ruled, and I was blessed to have sympathizers among my ranks. Still... Even now, there remain ardent dissidents. But things can still change if you have the right people to help lead the way. Isn't that what you hope to achieve on Lenigus, after this is all over? Indeed. I have fully accepted the burden of that responsibility. In that regard, I remain determined. On that note, I have something of a favor to ask of you, Alfin. Oh? What is it? I wish for you to serve as a mediator, so that the Renans can live on Dana peaceably. As the one and only Blazing Sword, I suspect the Danans may listen to what you have to say when problems arise. And I take it that you'll be the one to represent the Renans? Yes. I realize that I'm asking quite a lot of you. However, the fact of the matter is that it will take time for Renans to re-enter Danan society without any bloodshed. That is why... <laughs> You're the same as ever, Dohalim. Is it too much? No, relax. You get so tense and formal when you're asking for a favor. Listen, there's no need for that. We're friends. <sighs> you're too kind. I can see you were raised well. That's some high praise, Alfin. Then I'll ask once again, this time just as friends. Alfin, will you help me? You don't even need to ask. Of course I will. Thank you, my friend.
Well, it sounds like everyone's learning from their past and using it to create a better future for everyone. What about you, Xion? How do you feel about the origin of the Renans? To be honest, I'm... I'm not really all that shocked, actually. I mean, I might be a Renan in the literal sense, but I've never really felt like one of them. Right now, it's... kind of a mystery. How do you mean? Because for a really, really long time, all I ever thought about was how I was going to die. Not if or when, but how. I thought I'd die alone. That fate had me in its steely grip. I would have never imagined that I'd be traveling with someone like you, fighting to save Rena and Dana. I mean, how could I have? It's been going on for 300 years. All this tragedy and destruction. When you consider the Helganquil's part in all this, it's been even longer than that. It was Naori's hope that somehow, someone in the future would be able to stop it before it was too late. How it fell on us, of all people, to heed that call is a mystery. I don't think Naori was hoping that we would just stop the world from getting destroyed. She considered me, a Danon, as a real person. And she very much cherished her own people, too. I don't think she wanted the world to be saved just so they could go back to hurting each other. Oh, maybe this is what she meant. Huh? When we were talking to Kisara earlier, about all that stuff like everyone's needing to meet halfway and embrace each other's pain and suffering, she said that the first step down that path was for each of us to put aside our own hatred. That means forgiving other people, even and especially before they forgive you. Forgiving. So it goes both ways, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I don't just mean forgiving things that happened in the past, either. Conflicts will keep happening. If we have any hope of moving on and building a better future, we have to all learn to forgive each other. You know, you're right. People can hurt one another, without even meaning to. I know that better than most, thanks to these thorns. It's not going to be easy getting past this pain. But if we can do it, I'm sure there'll come a time when we can all truly understand each other. I'm there with you, Xion. I too want to protect the world we live in, and all the people we care about. I think that's the very least I can do to repay Naori for everything that she did. Yeah. I want a future that she would feel proud to live in, and I'm going to fight for it. Whoa there, Savior Girl. We're here to save you too, you know. Yes, I know. <sighs> Don't worry, I haven't forgotten. I want to live, and that's the honest truth. Well, is everybody ready to do what needs to be done? I am. There's a lot to think about, but at the end of the day, Dan is still in danger. I don't care who we're up against. We'll kick their ass! What are your thoughts, Alfin? I want to know what's on your mind, too. Like Law said, if we have to fight the Great Spirit on Rena, then so be it. It's trying to rob us of our entire world, and it's going to take not just our home, but all of existence along with it. That alone is enough to make it our enemy. But it's not only that. One way or another, I think beating the Great Spirit is going to be tied to us saving Xion. You're saying there's a chance? You're referring to the vision of destruction we all saw in Lenigus, I take it? Yeah. Three centuries ago, the astral energy that appeared at the spirit channeling ceremony showed Naori that vision. And to hear Xion tell it? It's the same one that she sees from her own thorns as well. Indeed. Xion's thorns are comprised of dark astral energy. The one type which we know is native only to Rena. And if Rena's great spirit is what's behind Dana's pending destruction, then... 
Xion's thorns are the great spirit? It's not actually on Rena like we thought? We don't know anything for certain. At the very least, though, I think it's possible her thorns are a part of the great spirit. While the main body resides in Rena. <sighs> Xion. If these thorns really are a part of Rena's great spirit, I'm going to go over there and give it a piece of my mind and then some. The question is, how do we confront it? Suffice it to say, that flower growing out of Rena is enormous, large enough to house the will of an entire planet. The Wedge and Lenigus were both hard enough for us to overcome in their own right. This is an altogether greater challenge for merely six. And we only know about the Thorn's connection thanks to Naori. Hevrick 35 has been observing the Great Astral Spirit this whole time. It wouldn't ask us to fight it unless it has a plan of some sort. Let's go see what that is. Our minds are made up. Let's go give Hevrek 35 our answer. So if the Sovereign and Maiden were originally boot-up programs for Lenigus, what about now? Even with the Forbidden Zone in ruins and the Renis Alma stolen, Lenigus is functioning fine. If it needed us before, it doesn't appear to now. First they lumber you with a position you never asked for, then you're discarded like you're nothing? Who the hell do they think they are? More importantly, who do they think we are? We might not even factor into their list of concerns. I just hope everyone on Lenigus is safe. Worst comes to worst, Lenigus is equipped with a large number of starships the people can escape in. As long as the whole satellite doesn't suddenly explode or something, they should be fine. Wait, explode? In any case, if we're truly going to make a difference, it's on Rena we're needed, not Lenigus. The people there will be fine, I'm sure of it. Right. Do you have your answer for me? We want to ask something first. You're asking us to fight an entire planet. How exactly do you expect us to do that? You must have something up your sleeve, or else you wouldn't put us up to it. The great astral spirit is an immense being, but its actual will does not run throughout its entire body. Rather, its will is derived from the core, which supports the rest of the body, and is where its strength is most densely concentrated. Therefore, if you destroy the core, the Great Spirit shall become unable to maintain sentience and return to being ordinary astral energy. And how are we supposed to destroy that core? By using the Renus Alma. <sighs> you will also need the assistance of both the Sovereign and the Maiden. They are our best tools for suppressing and controlling astral energy. Using their powers, the Maiden shall seal the great astral spirit within her body, and the Sovereign shall wield the power of the Renis Alma to destroy it. Hold on. That sounds a lot like what Xion described before. Yeah, killing herself to take out the thorns with her. She was actually right all along. By my calculations, your powers combined should be sufficient to destroy the great astral spirit and disperse its energy widely enough to make it difficult to reform. What will happen to the Maiden once we manage to beat the Great Astral Spirit? Any matter contained within the Field of Destruction shall be erased. So it really will kill me. This method is the most simple one available to destroy the Great Spirit, and is therefore our most reliable option. 
What are our other options? There is little reason to consider alternative courses of action when the most optimal among them is so clear. You don't get it. I promised Xion that she wouldn't die. That we'd save the world without needing to sacrifice her. We didn't fight this whole time just to give up on her at the very end. If there's any other way to take out the Great Spirit, I want to hear it. This plan shall lead to the fewest losses in preserving your world. Abandoning it is irrational. That's... It is vital that you proceed with this plan. A part of Rena's great astral spirit already resides within her. <sighs> Three hundred years ago, the Great Spirit descended upon Lenegus in an attempt to assume direct control of the spirit channeling ceremony. We have reason to believe the Great Spirit left part of itself behind and that it now resides in the Maiden. Which would make Alfin's earlier hypothesis correct. That part inside the Maiden belongs to the Core, and can be used by the Great Astral Spirit to revive itself. So long as it remains, it will be all but impossible to fully eradicate the Great Spirit. That is why it is necessary for it to be vanquished only once it is whole. Without the Maiden's direct control over the Great Spirit, attacking it is futile, and will only serve to strengthen it. No! Oh. Wait. Naori said that the Renis Alma can suppress the self-realization of astral energy, and that the thorns can be neutralized by placing them in it. If so, can't the same also be done to the Great Spirit, seeing as the thorns are simply part of it? Well, can it? It is true that the Renis Alma is capable of what you suggest, and could contain the Great Astral Spirit. Yes! However, doing so requires fine control on the level of the spirit channeling ceremony. Considering that the Renis Alma was previously lost when that ceremony failed, I cannot allow it. Its uncertainty is simply too great. What does that mean for us if you won't allow it? Your starship will not be restored, and you will all be unable to leave here. Why you? <sighs> fine then. I'd rather stay here and rot than do it your way. Alfin? Whatever we do, if we mess up, Dana's screwed. The Great Spirit will destroy it. If you're fine letting that happen, and we have nothing to gain either way, then I'd rather do nothing. We want to stop Dana from getting destroyed. We want to save it. But not if it means having to sacrifice one of us in the process. If all you're gonna do is sit back and watch us where it's safe, then quit ordering us around and shut up! Alfin... What you say is irrational. Be that as it may, I shall accede to your demand. You'll agree? I am an observer. The Sovereign, Maiden, and Renis Alma are my species' greatest achievement. I wish to see how well they work against the Great Spirit in light of our demise by its hands. But what are we supposed to do about the Renis Alma? One of your buddies ran off with it back on Lenigus. It is likely that the Renis Alma is with the Great Spirit, functioning as a catalyst for it to receive Dana's astral energy. So our only option to retrieve it is to head straight for the Great Spirit and take it back? According to my observations, the astral energy is most densely concentrated in the center of Rena, where the Great Spirit's core is located. So right in the middle of that giant flower, then. I have one more question. You've said that Rena's Great Astral Spirit is already integrated with the planet. What will happen to Rena once it vanishes? Without the will of the Great Spirit, Rena is predicted to collapse. Even in such a scenario, the energy will disperse, and the Great Spirit will likely not reform. So you're saying that even if we manage to beat the Great Spirit without destroying it, we'll still be in danger? Likely, the collapse will occur in stages. It is recommended that you all escape before the final stage. 
Man, I wish that thing would tell it to us straight for once. Havrek 35 and the others have gotten used to hypothesizing from afar, is all. Fix our starship. We're going to Rena. Excellent. But I want to make one thing clear. We're doing this for ourselves, to protect what matters to us. We're not doing it for your sake, or because you told us to. Remember that. It matters little to me. The end result shall be the same. Repair work on your starship has commenced. You'll have to wait until it's finished. Man, is it too much to ask for Hevert 35 to talk like a normal person? I swear I can feel my brain starting to fry after listening to all that complicated stuff. Don't worry. I think we're mostly done with him. Now all we have to do is rest up and wait. Once the Fall Knights is good to go again, we'll be taking off for Rena right away. Is the Renis Alma really our only hope against the Great Spirit? There has to be another way, right? Xion's Firemaster Core was able to suppress astral energy to prevent it from gaining sentience, right? Couldn't we make use of that somehow? I'm not sure. In small doses, maybe. But with the amount of energy we're talking about here... Back in Calaglia, the Blazing Sword was able to take in a whole spirit vessel's worth of energy. If it has the capacity to manage that, it can do this, right? Except after it absorbed the energy, it ended up releasing it all moments later, remember? Let's not forget, it nearly killed you. Besides, this is the great spirit we're talking about, not a paltry vessel. Even if I could use the Master Core, your body wouldn't be able to take the strain of channeling that much energy. Hevrecht 35 didn't mention it, and it did not seem the type to skimp on details. So assuming it's even possible, the chances are slim to none. You're probably right. You still thinking about what the scientists told us? About where Renans really come from? I am. But not for myself. You're worried about the future of the Renan people. The fact that our people have been the same this whole time will only give the Danans further reason to resent us. But you still intend to confront this truth head on, don't you? Well... I did declare that I would live my life for the living, and not the dead. Even as I dream of retirement, I shall remain dedicated to the cause. I'm sure you'll do great. Now that I think about it, I don't believe I've ever heard you criticize or reproach us Renans even once. I'm no saint. I have skeletons in my closet too. There was definitely a time when I hated Renans for who they were. I hated them just for being Renan. But you changed that, Dohalim. You gave me an opportunity to see them in a different light. Thanks to your reforms, we were able to stand next to Renans not as slaves, but as equals for the first time in our lives. Of course, I'm sure there were some Renans who still hated us on the inside. But we knew that not all of you were like that. There were those of you who were good. And that was a start. When it comes down to it, Renans are just people. They can be good or bad, just like Danans. That is, in essence, the heart of your approach, isn't it? That we're all people. Yeah, it is. When you can pull someone aside and talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, then you have the chance to come to an understanding. But as soon as you stereotype, 
that chance goes away, and you stop thinking of them as people that you can relate to. I understand what you're saying, but we're talking about massive numbers of Renans and Danans alike. Realistically speaking, surely they won't all be able to get along. Even if we end up butting heads with one person, maybe we'll find better luck among their friends. If we can build a society that works like that, that'll be something worth nurturing and protecting. So you wish for people to form real bonds and do away with the hierarchy outright. To deal with one another as humans, and nothing more. That's the ideal future you hope to see when this is all over? Yes, I do. I think it would make for a fine tribute to my brother's legacy. Though, that said, I would be doing it for the people of the future first and foremost. Do you still plan to return to Lenigus when this is over? Indeed I do. I don't know whether I'll be able to reside in Lenigus proper, however. My first order of business may be to find somewhere to live. You'll always have a home in Menencia, you know. <laughs> As I shall ever keep in mind. Well, if you ever need a helping hand, don't hesitate to come get me. I'll always be there for you, Doe. Did you just... <laughs> Never mind. Thank you, Kisara. I appreciate your patience as I work all this out. Don't even mention it. And really, when you think about it, now that we know the two of us aren't so different after all, don't you think that brings down a barrier that used to be between us? <sighs> you know, I hadn't actually thought of it that way before. <laughs> but I do like the sound of it. Yeah, I think I do too. Hey, why'd you call me here? Was there something you wanted to talk about? <sighs> well, if everything we've heard about the Great Spirit is true, then we're getting close to our final battle. So I wanted to apologize while I can. Apologize? For what? I was being real stupid before, about whether Dana's will had been controlling us and all that. I get why you're angry now. Anybody would be if something they trusted was being questioned. So, I'm sorry, Runewell. Really. I should have kept my mouth shut. No, Law. Honestly, I think you might have been onto something. Of course you were worried. Who wouldn't be if they found out there might be some invisible force pulling our strings this whole time? But you... you really trust Dana's will, don't you? Is it because you can sense it a lot more than the rest of us? Because you can understand it? Yeah, I think that might be part of it. But I think I also want to believe it's good. Believe? Remember how I used to really resent coming from a family of mages? Yeah, of course. Because you were always on the run and had to live in hiding. When we rescued Zephyr and, and I finally decided to come along with you all, something changed inside me. It was the first time I felt like my powers had any meaning, even if that meaning was only helping you guys fight. Then, when I felt Dana's will, I was overwhelmed by how vast and warm it was. It made me want to believe my powers were made to connect with it. It made me believe I had a bigger purpose. So that's why you hope it doesn't turn out to be bad. You almost need it to be kind. Yeah. Well, all right. Then I promise I'll lay off bad-mouthing it. You will? There's no way for me to know for sure one way or the other, right? But you trust it, Rinwell, and that's enough for me. So I'll trust it because you do. Uh... Remember what I said about neither planet's great spirit reaching us here? Hmm? Yeah? That's not quite true. 
I can feel just a little bit of Rena's inside you and everyone else. Uh, you... what? I sensed it when we first got here. It's a really small amount, so it doesn't feel like it has a will of its own. But I think that's how Dana's energy probably is too. So you're saying there's a little bit of Dana's will inside each of us? In a way, doesn't that mean we're all Dana's will? What? Well, like you said, unless Dana's energy comes together, it has no will. So if we all have a little bit of Dana's astral energy inside us... Yeah, maybe... Heffrick 35 might know the answer. But, you know what? I don't need to ask it. My will is my own. I fight for who I want to fight for. That's who I am now. Who I've become. So thanks, Rinwell, for sharing that with me. Ah. Uh. To be honest, the only reason I was suspicious of Dana's will... Well, I mean, it mostly was... I feel like you and I had grown apart lately, and I was worried it was because... Huh? Uh, never mind. <clears throat> Nothing. Just forget about it. Huh? Uh, no. What were you saying? Saying? I don't remember Come saying on. anything. Now you won't tell me what you were no, thinking? No, that's not what I'm saying. Then spit it out already. Um... Uh... Mm -hmm. <laughs> you sure you don't want to get some rest? I can't. I've got too much on my mind. Especially knowing how close our last battle is. How are you doing, Xion? Same as you, still trying to absorb everything. Remember when it was so simple, we were only fighting all the lords on Dana? <laughs> all of that feels like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? Ages and ages ago. Everything that's happened since we first met. So many fights, so much chaos, so many wonderful people. If I hadn't run into you that day, well, I wouldn't have met all of you. I never would have held the blazing sword or looked for something more. I wouldn't have my memories back. I'd still be a faceless slave, and like as not long dead. Hey, Alfin. I want you to promise me something. Yeah? If we can't find the Renis Alma, there's something I want you to do. Like Hevrecht 35 said, the only way we can end the Great Spirit for good is to go after both the main body in Rena and the thorns in me. I need you to promise me, Alfin, that if for some reason we can't get the Renis Alma back, you'll use the Blazing Sword to destroy the Great Spirit, and me along with it. Huh? It's true the Blazing Sword may not have the strength of the Renis Alma. But it's taken us this far. It's slain lords and beasts. At the very least, it has to be worth a try. You can't be serious. Have you forgotten everything Listen, that we've- the Great Spirit isn't just our problem. It's a threat to our entire world. Renans and Danans alike. We don't know what's going to happen when we face it, but we need to be prepared for anything. We can't second-guess ourselves when the time comes. I promise you I'm not planning on going anywhere. I'm prepared to fight with absolutely everything I've got. But if it comes down to it, 
I need you to be prepared too. Okay. But you should know that I'm not going to give up on you, Xion. I'm going to fight this until the very end. I hope you can forgive me for that. Alfin. Okay, I understand. And I'll forgive you. <sighs> Thank you, Xion. So it's a promise then? Yeah, it's a promise. I remember how I felt the first time you touched me. Hmm? My thorns made any contact a mistake no one would ever make twice. After they'd seen what could happen, fear would always linger behind their eyes. In my entire life, I never had someone willingly reach out to me. But when you reached out to me and gently took my hand, you didn't react at all. It was so easy for you. I don't have words for the shock I felt in that moment. That's because I couldn't feel pain back then. Even once you could, though, you still chose to keep reaching out to me. And when you did, I felt this warmth that I had never known before. But still, I hate having to see you suffer through it every time you do. You won't have to worry about that for much longer. You think so? I do, because I... Shiana, I, uh... No. You can tell me once my thorns are gone. <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Everybody get enough rest? We ready for this? Yeah, we should probably get moving. Agreed. Can't stand around waiting all day. Our task is relatively straightforward. We need only to send down to Rena, defeat the Great Spirit, and restore stability to both worlds. We're fighting for a new future for both Dana and Rena. Right. We've come this far. We will save our worlds. That's a promise. Then let's go, everybody. We've got one last wall to tear down. Repairs on your starship are complete. Everything is in working order. Is that you, Hevrek 35? You can see us from where you are? I can. I can see anywhere within the bounds of Dake Faisal. Sounds like someone's a peeping Tom. Maybe we should give Hevrek 35 a break. It has been stuck in this tiny facility for a very, very long time. I have unlocked all functions on your starship. You can now make use of its warp drive. Warp drive? Wait, you mean like what the Red Women used on us? What brought us here? It's possible that the Red Women may have found a way to activate it on the starship. They are Helganquil, after all. Using the warp drive, you should be able to breach Rena's atmosphere without being detected. Wait, should? You'll need to be careful. Due to the force field surrounding Rena, the ship will be unable to go any further than the surface of the planet. So, once we reach the shell, it appears we'll have to infiltrate the core by foot. Understood. We gotta go all the way down just... walking? Will all the Helganquil go back to normal once we defeat the Great Spirit? I have a strange feeling we're going to have to fight them before this is all over. The extinction of my people is inevitable at this stage. As such, it would be illogical to risk the success of the mission in a vain attempt to save my kind. Hmm. We understand. Can't that thing lighten up a bit? 
Everything it says seems to be about what's illogical. Well, come on, Doe. <clears throat> Hold up. Did you just... You heard the lady. Get going. I have one last question. What? As Sovereign, your identification number indicates that you are well past your predicted life expectancy. Similarly, the Maiden lacks any identification number, as her function should have been rendered unnecessary. Despite this, the two of you continue to exist. Why? We exist because others have entrusted this to us. Over the years, many people have come together and sworn to see this through to the end. You mean it is because of multiple chance interactions? The likelihood of such events is statistically improbable. Why have you two continued to persist under these conditions? It's hard to explain. To be honest, I don't think it's something an observer could understand. All right, time to get back on the Fall Knights. 